four musicians and their manager made this film. Other musicians appear in it. Some just didn't make it. Factory Records, a partnership, a business, a joke. The cast, the unemployed actor, Erasmus, the talking head, Wilson, the artistic student, Savile, the mad professor, Hannett, the Perry boy, Gretton, the used car salesman, Boom, the interrogator, Mitchell, the angry young man, Cassidy, the angry young woman, Anon, the man in bed, Schaumburg, the man in the puff, Shelley! From the heart of Manchester, we bring you the word came out of L.A., son of out of the 20th century. This is the front garden of Anthony Howard Wilson. He thinks he runs a record company in his spare time. Blue Monday's got to be seven inch, you know. We'll sell half a million. He had four partners. I think you've got a very smart bunch of lawyers. <laughs> and then there were three. I didn't really leave Factory Records. I just had to go on and do some more work. And then there were two. Uh, you seem to have been taking a bit of a back seat lately, Alan. Uh, why is this? I'm dead is somebody asking me that question. I would have uh, done a lot of things different. I would have signed uh, what a different band. Would have got rid of a lot of bands. <laughs> they also have a club. Occasionally, they have a hit. And then there's the musicians. This is one of them. In slow motion. Yeah, what's it all about? What's it, what's it all about? <laughs> the truth. I could I could give you um, eighteen different truths or loads of different stories, um, but they all come down to praxis. Do you know what praxis is? Praxis. No. Pra the word praxis makes perfect. <laughs> praxis is the idea that you do something because you want to do it, and after you've done it, you find out all the reasons why you did it. And I could give you a hundred great reasons, political, ideological, aesthetic. I mean, I, I like the friends I made in punk working as a journalist in 76 and 77, didn't want to lose them. I'm trained as an academic. I wanted to do experiments, laboratory experiments in popular art. Experiment with people like you, you see. Um, your experiment with me in the bath. I wanted to make political experiments as to how you could function politically in the marketplace. But all those things, which I might say were the reasons, I've only found out they were the reasons for doing it by doing it. Yeah. You just do it. I mean, just everything we did, everything you've done, everything we've all done, just because you wanted to do it. I can think of great reasons afterwards, but it'd be dishonest. <laughs> if you were in uh, sole charge of Factory Records, what would be the first thing that you'd do? Sat Rob, Re Rob Gretton. <laughs> well, if he was in charge of Factory Records, Tony Wilson would have gone. Oh, I did get on with Tony, yeah, but there was just a lot of things that I had to do. Do you like Tony? Yeah, a lot. Trying to talk to that fucking one-way mirror that is the chairman of the board. Who, Tony? Yeah, Tony. So, don't you ever get bored or fed up with it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what makes me fed up? Go on. Musicians, musicians. <laughs> Pills, man. Pills, pills. Anybody else want? Any of you miserable musicians want any more pills? You want pills? Pills. Yeah, yeah, turn me on to a pill. Yeah, yeah. Three pills. Three pills. 
<laughs> so, uh, are you all happy with the way it's all no. going? No. See, Bruce, there's a guy at the back over here, right? How many years has he been in the music business? He looks like 40. Yeah. He's oh, short, man and boy. Man and boy. <laughs> about 35 years. Well, the longest period has been with Factory Records. I want you to know that. <laughs> How do you feel about Bruce it? Bruce has got a sandwich. Um, well, I'm a bit disturbed by, by, the, by the man who's in charge of our destiny. I want to know, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> nice one, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hooray. Hooray. Do, do you really know what you're doing? Yeah, you've got a successful from minute, company. From minute to minute, I know what I want. Which isn't the same. It thing. might change. Well, that's, that's no good no. to us, is it? <laughs> right, so if you two were head of factory records, and you had all, you yeah, know, the resources, got all the money and the fans yeah. and everything, what would you do with it all? Sack Martin Hammett. Well, how did you get involved with, dare I say it, factory records? Uh, well, after I invented it, I did some talent spotting. Mm. I got a talking head and a hitman yeah. and some groups. This is your recipe for success? Every time. What makes somebody want to start a record company and put records out? Um, idiot enthusiasm, mostly. I didn't really think about where it'd go. I was in it for the moment. That'd just be about the time of the punk thing. Yeah, that would be. But the idiot enthusiasm lingers on. Punks grow older, don't they? You can't stay a no, fucking punk No, people change, cos right? people get bored. I wanted to talk, yeah. I love talk. Uh, yeah. I'd say that something that no one uh, else has mentioned in this programme, and I know because I'm making it, is that uh, Factory is uh, very much to do with punk, and punk, as we say uh, here, and uh, no one else has uh, mentioned it. Basically, it was to do with changing the way things operate. Do I think it's still a punk label? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. It's, uh... We'd have Sid Vicious back any time. Uh, white wine. I'm going in white wine. Yeah, ask him about your hospital. Someone find out where the white wine is. Why is it when we want to see you, we can't see you? I don't know, you must be blind, I'm here. Well, every time I need you, you're not there. I don't drink pills, ginger beer. Have a glass It's called style. Not being available is style. Yeah. It would be a shame, wouldn't it, that if a group didn't succeed as well as they could do because his theories were holding them back you see me you see me every saturday night in here what do you say you say i i say i yeah but every time i got to talk to you you're running off with some skaggy somewhere or whatever <laughs> every time i want to talk it's i'll be back in, I'll be back in a minute listen we've got a lot to talk about you and me haven't we yeah i know and you right. said no 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 no, no we got a lot to talk about this is a very complicated matter this you know money money big money right and we're waiting until either you say you want to talk to us or we say we want to talk to you. Now, we're going to say we want to talk to you in three weeks' time if you haven't said it before that. And we decided that three months ago. Yeah. It's all planned. It's all but, strategy. But last time I seen you, you said you wanted to talk to me. And you said, hang on a minute. Hang, don't go away. I'll be here. And I waited till two o'clock in the morning. And where was you? You, you weren't I must there. Have, I must have had a drink. You see, that's what I mean. I that's why I was saying, when I want you, you ain't there. I'll be there when you need me. When you want me. When you want me, I'm not there. When you need me, I'll be there. That's the difference. And that annoys me about factory as well, because you have to stand there out in the desert, holding on to your own little truth, waiting for the boat to come in. You know, unlike maybe it never will. Mass art is an ephemeral thing, right? It's like, why is the rose beautiful? Because it fades, it grows, it fades. I'm, not, all the I'm time. not into all that business. I know you're not. You're not meant to be. You're a musician, right? You're not meant to understand music. That's the whole point. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I am. You're the nicest bastard of ever. When you have an argument with him, he starts using all this college language on you. When, when, we're, t when we're talking to you, right? <laughs> for, you, for you just to say. I'm sorry, yeah, he didn't always do All right, it. for instance, when we're talking to you, right? I try to talk to you. Yeah. And for, for you to say, no, you're not getting it, you some big. Big weighty word, right? Just to say, no, you're not getting it. And then you don't put no one in the picture, so we're thinking, oh yeah, there's still a chance there, but really what you mean is, no, you can't have it, or I don't like what this. What have I ever said no to? Um, well, where would you be with that musician thing? You wouldn't have a company, would you? No, that is the problem. Oh, we accept, I accept the, the inevitability that you're going to be working with musicians if you're in the music industry. I just wish one didn't have to. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> no, that's not actually. I mean, I'm, I'm over exaggerating as well. They are the difficult thing. But then again, it's all about songs. The whole business is about songs. The world of it is about songs. Factory Records is about songs. And um, it's the musicians, the individuals who come up with the individual songs which make it all worthwhile and which are the central final moment of it all. <laughs> Thank you.
want to know about philosophy. We, we, we want to know about the private eye allegations of you being a fascist. It's fine. You know me. When? You all know my politics. I don't have to explain to you on a TV camera. Oh, well, well, I think you should pigeonhole it. New order fascist. You know, it's such a joke. They're not making terms <laughs> seriously. Um, they're leftist, idealist, you know. Um, well, frankly, I think they're anarchists. <laughs> Factory politics are, are um, complex. I, I was saying that the politics of the absurd, so it's difficult to explain. <laughs> Just been interviewed in a bath with um, a glass of champagne and talking about the reality of the marketplace is politics. It is politics. Factory is politics. Factory is politics in direct action. Mm. Are you doing what you want, what you believe in? Mm. This is beer, by the way. Factory is so <laughs> fucking cheap. What can I say? It's always important to uh, destroy as many illusions as you create. Oh, yeah. Are you a capitalist? Yes. Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, it's, I mean, I, in the end, the money that Factory makes is taken from surplus labour. I don't really know what's going on. If you profit from surplus labour, then you're a capitalist, and I'm a capitalist. Although, actually, I don't make any money, so I suppose I'm not, but I function, I function to make... I function with a system that makes money through capitalist acts, yes. My next question, what occupation is down on your passport? Entrepreneur. entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, that's a bit pretentious, that. It's not the truth, truth, is it? I'm very for the entrepreneur, yes. I like this person wandering around who they can't understand. I mean, they can't, I mean, the, the word came out of L.A. that um, the Geffen organisation told Warner Brothers that you've got to be very careful with these people because uh, they're Marxists, which uh, I find very, very um, flattering, but very amusing that, that they don't know what to do. I mean, an L.A. record company executive does not, not know what to do with a Marxist or a Kipak Street hooligan like Greta. So I, I, I would rather go on confusing people for the next few years. Do you, do you think everyone at Factory is loaded? Hmm? I think everybody at factories loaded. Uh, what you mean on money? Um, <laughs> How much money? Put the camera on them. How much money have I made out of you lot? How much money have we made? I, I don't You've made, know. A we made never, money? Yeah, totally. We never get to see the books. We never see the account. Yeah, that's the They're thing. They're always there. Is, is, is there a book? Do you, every deal. Uh, every there's deal. There's all these books. Every, every, Good bear me out God. on this. Right, right. Bear me out. Every, every deal I've seen Tony do has been on the back of his hand with a biro. <laughs> oh, 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 I think we sold 5,000 of them, so that's about uh, a penny a piece, and, and that's how you've done most of the deals. Is that true, or is it? That's there's right. A certain, there's, a certain, seen... there's a certain hand in hand quality to it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. How much do you feel you contributed to the success of Factory Records? Very little. All I did was make a few records. Nothing, is it? Well, no, is it? Well, in a world of market forces, it doesn't mean a lot, does it? A world composed entirely of market forces, aren't you? So you're a lucky man, right? Yeah. Our, you know our policy, which was no advances, no contracts, you're completely free, you can go to another label yesterday. Mm. In fact, you probably tried yesterday, but here you are today because you didn't make it. So here we are again, fine. And we were here, you know, we yeah. don't mind, we yeah. don't mind. So we don't, we don't pay money. We don't give an advance. You, uh, you get the money you earn from your record. When? Yeah, I, I know. know. When? It's just that that's difficult when? to get you, sometimes. Certain ratios, it's difficult sometimes. I suppose eventually, maybe in a couple more years, I won't have any beefs about Factory at all because I won't care about whether we sell so many records or not. I won't give a shit, you know, because I'll I'll be making a living, or I'll be, you know, I'll be making enough to eat on in some other way. I got very fed up last year, and um, mostly with musicians, and with the um, struggle against the um, against the forces of debt, and um, when money got difficult. The first four years, money was dead easy, right? Because I'm very careful with money, and then your idiot manager started spending more of it than we had, and I got neurotic about that, and finally musicians whining cracked my spirit for about three months. I'm back on form now. Here I am in the bath with you, Jimmy. Now tell me, right, as a record company, why did Factory diversify into clubs and video, etc.? Um, I think basically with that, I mean, there was, it, we, we had to, I mean, there was lots of people had different ideas, and we had to think of ways of... Spending your money. Spending the money, so <laughs> it was, it, we spent them on the ideas, yeah. The club called uh, 
The Ponderosa. No, it's the like Hacienda. Oh, it's nice. yet to be built. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to open a club. I don't think the club is quite right yet. Why did you presume to think that you could fill a, a building of this size with just the groups that you like? I, I didn't. I never presumed. I Who's didn't. fault is it? It's, it's, um, it's mostly New Order's fault, really, in Gretton. I'm by blind them entirely. <laughs> As far as I was concerned, it just had a lot to do with my budgets, you know, which suddenly vanished down a hole in the ground called the Hacienda. Is the club actually making a profit now? No. It's not making a profit? Not as yet, because there's a lot of... It costs a lot of money to build a club like that. Why, why do you think that's actually open this club? They got a lot of money they wanted to spend on something. But I think it's very nice of you to keep on subsidising all their money, losing operations, and you and the boys. It's great. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, we've always... It was either that or the RSPCA, really. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you only opened the Hacienda to further your career as a disc jockey? Um, it's a good question, that. No. Uh, I never really had a career as a disc jockey, anyway. too light. It's horrible when it's crowded. It's very nice when it's empty. But there aren't enough dark corners and there's no back room. Yeah, that's, you think the club should be dark, a place where you can go and hide somewhere. I think there's got to be some sex and some threat. Do you think it's a good idea for a club to be owned by a record company? I, I would say that that depended on the record company. I think it's yeah. a good uh, thing that this club is owned by Factory, because Factory do have style and do have a very uh, distinct image, and do, they do have style, yeah. I mean, I, th I should imagine if uh, K-Tel had opened the club, it would be a lot different. So, as a director of the Hacienda, do you think you could say that it's worked? The Hacienda's worked? Yeah. In some ways, the Hacienda's worked, yeah. As a director of the farm, do you think that's worked? Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the farm works uh, nearly as well as the Hacienda, in fact. In fact, we get more people at the farm. <laughs> people should be more... And this goes for any, any, any record company and any band. It appalls me how passive people are. I think they should be more critical. And it, if people were more critical, it would improve things. What's the main criticism that people level at you? That we've made a lot of money. It's quite a miracle, really, I think. It's a miracle that we're still friends. It's a miracle I owe you £200,000 and you're, not, you're still in the back with me. Are you still getting away? I'm still getting away. Listen, it's your fault. It's his fault from the bloody Hacienda. I tell you, God, I mean, the place is papered with bloody money. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Not my idea. I want to know what happens to all this money. You ought to make loads of money and where, where does it go? Apart, apart from well, down your necks. The factory and us as well have um, put money into the Hacienda anyway, so provided somewhere else for Manchester. Yeah, a bad investment. A lot of people are very frightened of coming to the club and saying we want to put a project on. And that's part of the factory image that is probably destructive as opposed to positive. Do you ever make mistakes? Do I ever make mistakes? Very, very rarely. Very rarely, indeed. <laughs>
I've got the wrong questions. <laughs> What was your involvement with Factory Records in the beginning, and what is it now? What was it in the beginning? Uh, resident, uh, resident artist, I think, in the beginning. And now it's uh, occasional artist. I mean, Factory, I think I see very much as the sort of doing for the 80s what Bieber did with, for the 70s. It's, uh, you know, merchandising taste as a, as a product. It's Aubrey Beardsley sort of table mats and Dali prints and um, people are very much attracted to the idea of the taste, of good taste, which it isn't of course, because it's very nouveau riche. If you do the things to sell it, as if you're selling a commodity or a bag of Weetabix, then we will regard the thing we're doing as a bag of Weetabix. Atmospheres, girls don't count, flight. These songs are not not bo boxes of Weetabix. So, how important do you feel style is to Patra? In the early days, it was very important because it set Factory apart from all the other independent labels, and in lots of ways, it still sets Factory apart from every label. A lot of pe different people have different images, don't they? Some think that it's fascist, some think it's gloomy and grey, some think it's really stylish. Depends. If you don't actually put an image, definite image forward, then people form their own. There's a, a reaction against it now, but in the beginning it was well received and I think it was really important because there was independent labels starting up every week and Factory was the only one that had an identity of its own. So where do you think that reaction against it's come from? Well people are suspicious of style now because <clears throat> the major, major record companies have all used packaging and design and things like that to sell records. Very often records aren't very good. The market is now a little bit uh, suspicious. Uh, when did you last have sex then? Uh, funny you should ask me that question. It was about um, six o'clock this morning. This morning? Feel that sex is dirty. But it can be. Seven months, three days ago. I'm saving it for something very special. <laughs> Seven months, three days. It wasn't very good. You should have seen me in New York with Bob Krasner and lecture. I had no clothes on because I got caught in a thunderstorm. But then that, so I had no clothes on, I caught the clothes on, I had my trousers, taking my shirt off. I ushered us into this room with um, him and Lundbal of CBS, ex-CBS, in their suits and stuff, and they were very shocked. And they ordered us a limo to go home because it was pouring down the rain. So when we got to the door afterwards, about 8 o'clock at night, Bob Krasnow said, listen, uh, I know about your principles, but please, uh, please take the limo for tonight. And um, I was on my way to the limo anyway, you know, great. I said, listen, <laughs> as Trotsky once said, while we fight to change life, let us not forget the reasons for living. And as he laughed, I jumped into the limo and went off down the road. <laughs> right. As Trotsky once said, as Trotsky once said, as Trotsky once said, The man knows too many quotes from too many tedious tomes for his own good. I think it tends to swamp a lot of what he's got to say, and I think it also takes the place of any kind of creative function. It's a pompous answer that no one can take it seriously. <laughs> 
Who is my hero? Who are my heroes today? They change every day. Pasolini's Jesus Christ, his major hero. Early Hegelian Marx, second hero. Rob Gretton, Les Dawson, Ed Murrow, William Shakespeare, Marcel Proust, Bobby Robson when he heads a goal. I mean, they, they change every day. You, Julian, you, <laughs> you, when your shoulder strap comes off at a concert, the, well, the shoulder strap it just moves off so nicely, you know what I mean? Did you find that? No. Let me show you just sexist as well, then. No, I'm not sexist. I'm an aesthetician. I love beauty. They've all got bad haircuts. That's the trouble with factory. Yeah, Tony Wilson lies about his age. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to drown in here today. On my travels to the top. Do you think you've hurt anybody on the way? Intentionally or unintentionally? Being down so long, it feels like the top to me. <laughs> um, yes. Do I have to wear makeup? Let's get down now, Larry. <laughs> Sometimes you don't like me, do you? No. <laughs> I think Tony's you can okay. Say whatever you want. No, I know. I think he, I think he's okay. We don't very often get on. Don't you row a lot? You row we a do. Lot. We row a lot, a hell of a lot. Yeah. But Why? I mean, I think that's. What do you row about? What Tony always rows about. What money? Ooh, money. Let's talk about money. This is this is very interesting. Yeah, you're all getting. It's nothing to do with the quality of the music, has it? The money. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> now. Technically speaking, you've had slightly more money than you've made, haven't you? I don't know. Well, you see, the business, record business functions by securing your investment, which is to secure your talent. So you sign people to seven-year deals and stuff. But we're only doing this for fun. In the end, I mean, it's an old Jake Rivera thing. Uh, you do it for, that's all it's about, fun. And you're doing it for fun and, for, and with integrity and stuff. Now, if we had a contract with you, what's that going to do? It means you're signed to us. What happens if you don't? If we all go off each other? You should be able to go away. So there's no point having a contract. As long as we're all friends, you've got to stay. As long as we're not friends, you've got to go. Which seems the right way to look at going and staying. So is it true that you've made the um, most money out of factory? Yes. <laughs> Would you still like to be uh, a director of factory records? Nah, it's not worth the trouble. What can I say? It's only the best deal yet, but it's still not good enough. But most of all, I like what my mother always said, you know, be a nice boy. I'd like to, be, <laughs> I'd like to when all this is over, still be a nice boy, right? And that's the, that's the most important ambition. And I'd like to see the revolution in my life. <laughs> Well,
I, it's, it's partly intentional because at school I was, I was and I am very clever and I'm very arrogant uh, and put the two together and you become a very unpleasant person unless you, unless you behave like an idiot. And I'm a, an idiot rather like Shakespeare's fools who are the idiots in the plays and always very stupid and stuff. But at the same time, they're the only ones that read the play. From the very beginning of the play, they always know exactly what's going on. They're always the cleverest. But to, to avoid being persecuted for that cleverness, you behave like an idiot. Like getting in the bath with you now. It makes me appear less awful and arrogant and elitist and um, uh, extremist than I am, which I am. You don't hate them. I just don't see the point of making a programme about factory records, because as far as Manchester's concerned, I don't think they're really important. Hello? What are your ambitions then? Okay, I'll ask him then. All right, bye bye. Uh, what are my ambitions? My ambitions are never to work again. Uh, when I was 23, I decided that working was pretty boring. So I decided to give up working. Uh, what are your ambitions though? What do you see? Where do you see Factory going in the future? Um. To, 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 to do more factory, to be factory in more places. I mean, every year, it's rather like farming. You know what I mean? It's rather like farming in that every year we have a crop, which is normally your album, and there's Vinnie's album, and certain Rachel's album, whatever. Every year there's a crop of albums. Do you think your work in factory has given you a good grounding for uh, farming? Well, yeah, there's been a lot of bullshit. And after we've struggled to get there and get them all out, then three months later, the money comes in and we pay all the bills. And for another couple of months, there's a bit more money. And every time we have a bit of money, then we can do something interesting. Like we did the Hacienda last year, or the video unit the year before that. Next thing I like to do is, is get um, the office in New York buzzing. Thing after that, I'd like to build lofts in Manchester. The year after that, Gretchen wants to, um, wants to buy Manchester. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a million things one could do. But to do things that are... That are valid in the marketplace and valid in the political textbook at the same and moral textbook at the same time and also valid as, as art in terms of style all those things mixed together which we've done already but to do them in other areas um, my ambition is back to record to make lots of money through the diversification that's going into film and other things and to use this money for the interview. <laughs> I thought the questions were really boring as well. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a very yeah. low profile factory production. <laughs> Icon could have done That's much That's the best you job. can do. We want Claude. Stick to warbling. <laughs> we want Claude. Shall we go? Well, how do you think that went then, Barn? I'd say it was a piece of cake. That's a good idea. <laughs> Who says we don't do videos? <laughs>